Blue Wire. Kirk Cousins, he's going to be a Minnesota Viking. This was the right call. Cousins, pressure, hit as he throws, going for Thielen. To Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. We are part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. Subscribe. Go to the Apple Podcast app. Go to Spotify. Go to YouTube. You can get us on Twitter, at Bleeding Podcast. Make sure you rate us. I mean, good or bad, but hopefully good. Uh, my name's Tyler Hag. Joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. We're coming off a of W, Adam. It feels like it's been a really long time, but the last time we talked was pre-Thursday Night Football. Vikings win. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, how was your first Sunday this year without Vikings football? It was weird and strange, and I hated it. <laughs> yeah. Turns out my TV has uh, an option where I can watch like four games at once on Whoa. one like, channel. No idea. I had no idea because I'm always watching the one, and then the next game's up, and I'm off doing something. I was a little bit embarrassed, yeah. honestly, that I didn't <laughs> know that I had that <laughs> available. Yeah, I missed I miss most of the early games because I was busy mounting my TV onto the wall. So Ooh. I did. That was my uh, thing that I did instead of you know. There's no Vikings game on, so let's do this. It'll only take uh, a second, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. How yeah, did it only come? Was it three hours? <laughs> was, oh, it was good. Yeah, but you got it, and it's sturdy, and nothing's falling on anybody. Yeah, it's it's there for now. So mm-hmm. let's see, I had to move it because you know the boy likes to grab stuff, so totally. gotta get everything out of the way. And uh, the grabbing slash touching, that doesn't stop. Four-year-old and Mm two-year-old, my TV is just printed up constantly. It's disgusting (laughs) to look at when it's not turned on because you can actually see it. Yeah, that's why we were like, let's let's, let's just put this on the wall. Let's get out of the way. Totally. We actually have talked about it (laughs) because of this. Like, God, what if it was just up there and they couldn't even get to it? It'd be great. Yeah, pretty good. Kids, Sundays, free Sundays are fun. It's weird and different, and I don't think I like it, honestly. They're, um, they're, they're I, fun if, you know, you stay out of trouble. Yeah. Um, great segue. Someone who <laughs> wasn't able to do that, mm. uh, Mr. J. Ron Curse. So yeah. the big news coming out of, I guess, the post-Thursday night slash Sunday slash Monday morning was uh, J. Ron Curse was drankson and then did some drives in. And yep. then decided to drive on a part of 94 that was not open. Yep. So it made it pretty easy for the police to be like, that guy shouldn't be there. What's he doing? Let's pull him over. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't have like a, a noticeable vehicle either. I'm sure it no, was I'm very, sure it was uh, a very normal. I bet it was a Corsica. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Just a like a, a Nissan Altima or something. Totally. A Honda Civic. <laughs> 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 um, and then they pull him over and. Lo and behold, there is a loaded, unregistered, on whatever uh, yep. weapon in the vehicle. So just, uh, yeah, just <laughs> just a full congratulations, J. Ron Curse, on bleeping that thing up um, all the way through. Cap- captain. Yeah, J. captain. He's a captain. Yep. He said today, talked to the media today, and said it was a really bad decision. I will say this about his comments, because uh, this, by the way, if you are unaware is the dumbest thing that professional athletes can do. (sighs) Every league has its own group of vehicles who are there specifically to take professional, special, important people out of bars and nightclubs so that they don't Mm -hmm. have to drive like that. It's just there for you if you want it. None of these guys want it. You you can take, you know, the luxury Uber to deal with, you know, regular Uber. Get you know, a I helicopter from Hoover. Or Hoover yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was um, hard and I'm pretty sure, you know, NFL players' salary, at least Jaron Curses, uh, an Uber ride costs a lot less than, you know, what he's going to be paying in, you know, fines and uh, yeah. lawyer fees. Absolutely so. uh, dumb. And I don't know what we're expecting. I'm sure there's going to be some type of uh, discipline coming from the team. And I would imagine some type of discipline coming from uh, the NFL as well. We'll wait to did find you wa- out. Did you watch him speak to the I, uh, people today, or did you just see the comments? I only saw the – I only read it. I did not see it. Yeah, because I just, I just watched his, his 
presser or whatever it's, they want to call it. Yeah, um, what did you think was, about it? Because I was, it was kind of so. Yeah, it was so awkward. Was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's like, um, "Do you want to give us any details on what happened?" And he's just like, mm, "No, no." Like, well, I'm why would I tell you that? <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, it's like "Oh, by the way, I, Mike Zimmer, what did here's you say? a detail. I had weed in the card too, but he just yeah, yeah, ignored yeah. that because that. I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, like that's what he's gonna say. No, that awesome. was that's it's funny you say that because that was that was a thing. What uh, didn't Adrian Peterson like when he was uh, doing his legal stuff? Like, that wasn't he like? Oh yeah, I uh, I I took a little drag of weed or 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 whatever during yeah, one I'm of his, sure what his he incidents, like, and everyone's like, "What are you doing? Yeah, shut up! Stop talking!" Yeah, but, uh, I, that yeah, sounds was, familiar. Actually, it was just awkward because people were like, "Oh, what Mike Zimmer say and stuff." And he's like, "I'm I'm not going to talk about it. Like, I'm just yeah, I haven't <laughs> I'm talked here to, to say him, sorry. I'm, I'm That's terrified. It. I yeah. did find it. I did find it interesting that it, he did say it's not a reflection." of the person that I am, but um were you carrying a loaded gun in your car definitely is a reflection of the kind of person that you are. It's um, really hard for it to be anything besides a reflection of who you are yeah. when you've purchased uh, and or I shouldn't even say like owned, but like when you got that hanging out on the regs, th- yeah. that tells us something. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the drinking he was it was only like what, point one I think. So it was, yeah. That wasn't even that bad um still we had, have yeah that's what i was gonna say is that it, it wasn't like comically over the limit i guess which it's is still, what yeah, we're like used to wheel. seeing but yeah over the legal limit dude you know better like come on yeah like i'm old enough to where like if i have one drink i'm at the point in my life where my wife's just like yeah you're not driving so it's like but i only had one and like, yeah, yeah, like right. Mm, doesn't matter and here's why because i don't know and you don't know and you're probably good but what if you're not and we get pulled over that's too yeah. much money that we're not going to want to spend <laughs> there's a better option yeah. here and for him even, there also was a better yeah. option there <laughs> and he yeah. didn't he chose not to take that even for him there's <clears throat> that's too much money that he probably wanted to spend this weekend so yeah think about that think about having like nfl uh starter money in the bank and then uh being like eh, i just can't pay that much for an uber like, because that's a real yeah. thought, you know? Like, that's a real thing. That's yeah. a very different yeah. uh, way. Well, you know, he, dry, he probably drove. Probably drove him. Obviously, he drove himself. And he wanted to, you know, show off his, his ride, probably. Mm-hmm. So and that's, then, a lot of, that's what a lot of athletes do. You know, they want to show off. They make a lot of money, want, and they buy nice stuff. They want to show it off. Mm-hmm. So, And he probably lives but, in Mendota Heights, which is a but, little yeah, bit but, of ways away. And then he's got to come back and pick up his car. I'm not justifying it. I'm saying that's probably what he was thinking. But, you know, show off your stuff sober and then yeah. you uh and don't drive on highways that are closed yeah, that's what i was gonna say or show it off where there could be people because there weren't gonna be anybody on that closed part of 94 i'm sure he was just thinking i'm sure he wasn't that drunk and was thinking i'm just gonna go through this even though i'm not supposed to because it's so much faster to get it's to my house quicker, this way yeah. and they were like oh you're arrested now and he's <laughs> like <laughs> it's like ah bad decision i made a bad this is, decision this is a joke huh? yeah exactly <laughs> I'm a really good guy. I just am currently yeah. making a bad decision. I just have a loaded gun in my car. <laughs> Which also is a bad decision, but I'm a good guy making bad decisions right now. Yeah. Um, also funny, not that I'm trying to compare him to, like, he didn't commit murder here, so, like, I'm not yeah. trying to say that, but other people who make bad decisions and make bad decisions for just small little bits of time in their life are people who kill people and then also have to go to jail for a long time. Even mm-hmm. though that was a bad decision and only took a little bit of time, it oh, still okay. has repercussions. And I'm sure J. Ron Curse, again, didn't kill anybody, but I'm sure he will figure out you know, what the punishment is going they to should be, be for this. They sh- this might be exaggerating, but they should. he should be happy he didn't kill anybody because he was driving intoxicated and then he drove on a highway that was close and he could have either hurt himself or or hurt somebody else so very true don't do that don't do that uh speaking of trouble with the caps holton hill's coming back this week he previously was in trouble and is now not in trouble anymore because his suspension is up uh they needed it they were gonna be light feels like they're bad at <sighs> defensive back and secondary we'll get into that a little bit later yeah but uh, Holton Hill back. Are you excited? I'm. My heart has been broken by Holton Hill. So Holton <laughs> Hill's out for me. Like everybody that keeps talking about, like, oh, well, they have this and Holton Hill's going to be here. No, 
Mm -mm. He's got way more work to do for me in my mind to think that he's going to be a viable long-term option here because he's never, literally never been able to do it. No, well, he's only been here for, what, a year? Yeah, but you couldn't do it in college either. Yeah, yeah. So, no, keep the expectations low, definitely. Um, And if he does help out the Vikings this year, then then good for him. Yes, and that's not to say that he's not a good player, because he will step in and help right now, and they need it, and it's great. But don't give me this stuff about him being like the, oh, you can trade your corner, trade Xavier Rhodes, because Holton Hill's going to be here. Nah, dude. I'm sure he's been working out, and I know he's been been able to go to the team facility, so I think he's able to either attend meetings and stuff. I don't think he he couldn't practice until this week, Mm -hmm. but I think he was at least able to, like, meet with the team and stuff like that i think you are um correct. i think you are correct but yeah especially going against a team like uh the chiefs this week they're definitely going to need more speed in the secondary um and so his his arrival comes at a a convenient time for the vikings um so that's good at least how much he'll be able to do we don't know how much he'll play we don't know um but it's it's good to have more depth in an area where the Vikings probably need it. Hundred percent. As Mike Zimmer says, you can never have enough corners, and you can definitely never have enough <laughs> you know corners what? when he's right. Yeah, totally. When and especially not when. Everyone of that when he said that. <coughs> he's definitely right. Hundred percent. And we did. We kind of scoffed at that because, like, we're like, we got like eight of those, and they're all pretty good. Mike. Turns out, he knew. Uh, yeah, and it's also really good to have as many good defensive backs as you can have when the MVP of the league is coming back and about to shred your defense. We can get Maybe. into that a little bit later. Maybe. Well, that's probably better saved for Wednesday. I'll save that panic for yeah. for Wednesday. We can talk, We can start the panic. We can. That's true. And, <laughs> oh, I'm there, buddy. Oh, my God, I'm there. Well, you heard me. I called it on Twitter like three, that was two, three the weeks ago. The day after it, yeah. he got hurt. Yep. <laughs> God, that was the day after. That's really sad when you say it like that. Uh, but, yeah, so Holden Hill will be coming back. They're going to need him. Um, moving on to the Vikings post-Redskins. So the Vikings win. The Vikings look pretty good. We expected them to look good. What was your overall assessment of the Vikings' performance in Week 8? Um, Not a whole lot you can take away from it, I feel like. It's Thursday. I don't even think they had a real practice for the game. Just a bunch of walkthroughs. Um, and it showed. There was, it was a little sloppy. It looks like they just wanted to go out there, you know, do what they're good at, um, give the ball to Devin Cook a bunch of times, get more points in the Redskins, and just get out of there healthy. And they were able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't I, – I don't think anyone was really going to take a lot away from – this game because of how bad the Redskins are anyways. Um, so not a whole lot you can take away from it. Just maybe some performances. Um, you know, Diggs had another great game. Cook looked great again. Um, what do you have that nice screen pass where he just zigged and zagged all over the place? But according to somebody on Twitter, he's not athletic. So <laughs> yes, um, the not athletic Dalvin Cook was like ever. the most shocking thing I've read in a really long time. Like I honestly, I like clicked in research to figure out if it was like a Ned's tweets or like a McCracken, yeah, whatever that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude no, is. definitely a real Legit. person who replied meant, meant the bleep out people. of people. To make sure that people knew he was serious. Defended his didn't, take and clarified. He didn't think Dalvin Cook was athletic. The guy who breaks 97 tackles a game and just blows by every, anyone on a, any given opportunity. And kind of framed it in like he's leaving yards out there. Which is just if you've watched Elvin Cook's him. game, yeah, like he's there. <laughs> that's he's the opposite of leaving yards on like, the field. Like that's all he does like is eat yards, three yeah. or four yards, and yes. then he bounces off everybody and makes it twelve yards because of his athleticism. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? So yeah, real that fun stuff. Fun. I don't even remember who that dude was, but that was that just he wasn't. He's not. Uh, he, I think he's that guy's from Minnesota, and but he called himself like a fantasy football guru so maybe he's just right. stuck in fantasy land right because right. um i don't know him personally or never interacted with him it was just it was he did it and then everyone was just like mm, yeah, this is terrible yeah i just can't and 
it's a little bit encouraging that even when the hottest of takes are thrown out, there are still like we have enough sense on Twitter to be like, wait though, that you one know, I don't think so much. <laughs> that we one have, maybe we not. have our we have our disagreements online, Vikings fans do, but you know we can all come together and bury this guy. Yes, and identify when there's a garbage take. <laughs> Humans have been shaving for thousands of years, and the secret to a great shave, it hasn't changed much. Ancient Greeks didn't need flex balls or heated handles or anything, and neither do you. Uh, I love Harry because it gives me a close shave, easy glide, low price. Do me and the podcast a favor. Check out harrys.com slash bluewire for your free trial today. Harry's is super convenient. They're easy to deal with. Blade refills are sent to you on schedule with or without a subscription. There's no risk for you to try them. If you don't like it, you can let them know and they'll give you a full refund. Listeners of this show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash blue wire and you will get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash blue wire to start shaving better today. Uh, yeah, uh, you nailed it. Diggs looked really good. Cook, yeah. incredible, super athletic. I'm trying to think who else. Well, Alexander <laughs> Madison, I think he played He played well, but he had a bunch of runs called back on penalty. He had one really like impressive run where he broke like 19 tackles. I mean, looks like mini beast mode out there, just like 100%. Bowling. And I thought of you last week doing the Chris Berman thing to the <laughs> <laughs> when he was doing that. Yes. I'm like, that was perfect. Oh man, I've been very impressed with Alexander Madison. I think yeah. he has been and here to me the best compliment I can give him is uh because of the hair and the similar stature, there are a number of times a game where I'm like, "Oh, that was Alexander Madison." Cuz he looks that he's just as effective or, and you know, looks just yeah. as explosive. It's hard for me to tell who's who. And that's a good like sign his, when you got a guy that's that good. Um feel like you look his, like him. his shoulders are maybe a little more broad than than Dalvin Cook. Dalvin mm-hmm. Cook's a little more stockier, maybe? Yeah, that's a good and, way to put it, I think. Yeah. Madison's more got big broad shoulders. Yeah, know? for sure. And they're both like it's it it works really well because they do different things and they um honestly like in that read like game, they see things differently. Like they hit different holes yeah. at different times. It's they're both uh, productive. Yeah, definitely. And a really nice compliment uh to one another. Cook was good. Cousins was good. And, like, in fact, really good. I don't think... Cousins? Yeah, Cousins was. He's not going to get... Diggs? Throw to Diggs was amazing. On the sideline? 23 for 26 with two throwaways and a drop. Yeah, he didn't, he, didn't have to, he didn't have to do a whole lot. He didn't... You know, when he couldn't find anyone, he didn't force it. He didn't hang on to the ball too long. I think there was, like, one time where he was scrambling around, and I'm like, mm, but, totally. you know... Other than that, there wasn't a whole lot to freak out about. I think he got sacked a couple times, but he took the sacks. You know, he didn't try and throw the ball while he was going down or anything like that. Like he might have maybe in the past. He just to take the sack and give his, his offense uh, another chance. I think the best way to put it is he's playing within himself. He's not trying to do too much. He's not no. freaking out. He's just doing what he knows he's capable of doing, and he's trying to execute it as well as possible. And I think if that's he's, his outlook, the Vikings are going to be in really good shape because that's when he gets himself into trouble is when he's like, I can do this. Yeah. And it's like, nah, dude, you can't. And we know yeah, he seems. Can't. He seems – I feel like he seems super focused these past couple of weeks. Like even when you watch him in his press conferences, his, his demeanor and stuff is much more – is much different than maybe in the beginning of the year when he was probably a lot of little happier and gigglier. And now he's in his press conferences, just being like straight business. Like, you know, we, we won this game, but it doesn't really mean anything. So we're going to move on to next week and stuff. And it's like, Oh, okay. I do think it, that it's like a more genuine approach. I think the like first few weeks that was his project. I think that's him acting as a quarterback, yeah. and, what he yeah. thinks a quarterback is supposed to look. And that like drives people crazy. The fans hate that stuff. And you like, know what? I'm sure, tell. even though he says he doesn't notice anything going on on the outside, I'm sure that whole week after the Bears game didn't rub him the right way when everyone was throwing him under the bus and saying the Vikings should have never brought him here. So 
He's got something to prove. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Hundred percent, he does. And and that if that's what you need to play well, dude, go for it. But yeah, we sure. definitely were not into it. <laughs> you know, like that was that was a. But real... then he also posted a picture today of him dressed as Buzz Lightyear. So you know, <laughs> win some, you lose some. <laughs> we take another rock out of the death pile. Yeah, move it to the other side. <laughs> Uh, what else was good? You know what? Let's move right on to the bad. I want to talk about Xavier Rhodes. So Mm -hmm. the game, I'm not saying the game was like severely affected by this, but it was very apparent that Case Keenum and the Washington offense for a stretch Mm -hmm. there were totally attacking him. You can say whatever you want about the statistics or if he played good or bad or whatever, but you'd say they weren't afraid of him. That's exactly right. That's and and that is un. You cannot debate that. They were not afraid of him at all. And that's not something that we could say two or three years ago. What is your level of concern? A, do you think it was like where, like, light it on fire, he needs to get benched? Maybe those are two. Those two shouldn't be together. Maybe you just bench him without lighting it on fire, (laughs) if that's okay. Nicely bench him, ask him. I don't know. For the first time, I am not a guy who says, bench him or fire him or any of that. I was at a point during that game where I was like, it might be time to let Xavier chill out a little bit on the side. I don't know. It doesn't sound like Mike Zimmer is really like he really has a problem with the way Xavier Rhodes is playing this year. Just because because he mentioned after the game that he's he's like a power forward for a cornerback. He's a he's a physical guy. So he's always going to use his hands um, and they don't want him to change that. Um, but, but the NFL like this, doesn't want him to do it anymore. Yeah, it seems like this year <laughs> it's hurting him more than maybe any year in the past. And whether or not that has to do with them calling penalties more, because there's a there's a couple of times where you a call gets made on Xavier Rhodes, and then Trey Wayne does something similar, and he doesn't get the call. So I think sometimes it's, it's, it's just, fair to uh, think that officiating has something to do with this yeah. perceived decline. And I think that's totally face so far. Xavier Rhodes has been un- unlucky, but at the same time, he's been beat a lot. So he's got to turns back to the the quarterback and catch up. And I think you know he gets in trouble a lot this year by not just not turning his head around. Because if he did that, then he might be you know given the benefit of the doubt that you know he's fighting for the ball instead of just going for the receiver. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's he's hurt because he's been he's been dealing with like hip stuff. Yep. Uh, you know, had hamstring stuff last year. You know, if he is hurt, just give him some time to rest because right now he's not really helping the team by being out there and getting 30-yard penalties. Um, That's definitely not going to be helpful when they play the Chiefs, when Tyreek Hill is going to be running by him and and Miko Hardman, who I don't know who the Vikings are going to have Xavier Rhodes cover when they play the Chiefs because he's not fast enough anymore to keep up with either of those guys. I posted that question last night and a lot of people were like, they can cover Kelsey and I'm like, oh great, the top corner on the Vikings can cover their tight end. Right? Yeah, cool. That should be all of the teams should right. be able to cover a tight end with their corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I think you nailed it with the injury stuff. Whether or not he's injured is like maybe irrelevant at this point because what's apparent now is that whether it's injury or scheme or he just is like losing steps and speed, whatever the reasons are, they're exploiting it and when you're playing a team like kansas city that's going to get really ugly if he, if he plays the same i don't even want to say play the same way but i don't know a similar performance i think results in disaster for the vikings yeah. uh against kansas city but yeah uh, it's, yeah. it's gonna be very interesting to see what they do because they got a whatever the secondary just in general whatever what they've been doing this year hasn't been i know they're past past defense numbers are, are, are very good this year, but they've had some moments where they've given up given up some some pretty big plays that they might not have in the in the past. Yeah. And that can that, that can happen when you play the Chiefs. Totally. And and it feels like we're so used to seeing this defense dictate what's going to happen. <laughs> it feels like we're so used to seeing a defense that dictates what's going to happen. Like the corners are always super aggressive. The corners are knocking the ball down. And then to see a stretch where they're kind of being picked on, I think is also for Vikings fans, a really uh, difficult thing for them to, to swallow. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Cause you know, Xavier Rhodes, he went up against Julio Jones in week one and he shut him down. So we know he's still capable of, of doing something like that, but 
I just think maybe the the types of receivers that are in the NFL these days that, that are more common are the the smaller, quicker, you know, shiftier, speedier guys that Xavier Rhodes probably isn't the greatest at, at yeah. covering. You know, that's a really going, good point. Yeah, yeah. Going up against like the Julio Jones, the Calvin Johnsons, like those those big guys. Like even, you know, yeah, it's just he's. The league's different. No, so, totally. So That's a great receivers. point. Teams would rather have Julian Edelman, Cooper, Cooper Cup. Cup. Yeah. They would rather have that than a big, tall, six-five yep. uh, wide receiver. That's a great point. Yeah, I didn't even think about it like that. And yeah, as a result of that, if that's the the strategy, then he, God Almighty, is like the most obvious um, candidate to be abused by that because he doesn't. Yeah. You know, those are all of his. Uh, I don't want to say weaknesses, but not the strong points and. And what he does is sticking with small dudes like that. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you expect them to? Do you expect the Vikings to make any changes that way, no. or do you do you think they'll just start Definitely. normal squad? Not, and go for it? not unless he has an absolutely terrible game. I mean, you could argue that he has already, but like something that has a huge impact on the result, um, where like the whole game he's just playing awful. Um, I don't see them doing anything just because one, he Zimmer's guy yeah. and and Mike Zimmer like I said before doesn't really I don't think he sees anything that he's doing wrong he's just getting maybe more calls on him than than in the past because of some mm-hmm. of the things that he's he's still doing because he's a physical guy he uses his hands a lot more than maybe than than definitely than Trey Wayne's for sure um, yeah so it, that's just that's part of his game and and seems to be maybe hurting him this year so. it does it does and yeah, and it's yeah, he might. And it's just he be... still has eight games. He still has eight games to go, so he he's got plenty of time to fix it. You know, they still got the bye week and stuff. He's got he had some extra totally. time this week, so could have been a hip issue. Not, could have been. I'm a not giving up on. Thing. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not giving up on some guy who was an all pro. You know, two years ago. Yeah, and it definitely is one. It's not out of the realm of possibilities for the Vikings to have decided early on that they're not going to beat us deep and we are going to beat them because of it. So Xavier Rhodes yeah. getting like hit underneath with all these like comeback routes is like, yeah, whatever, dude, take it. They like, do that. Zimmer Zimmer wants them to keep everyone in front of them. He yeah. doesn't. He coaches them to not make sure no one you know goes over the top. Mm-hmm. Sometimes and that can be happen. unfortunate for those guys because it looks like he's getting beat time and time and yeah. time again. But I mean, it yeah, it could it could have been that honestly. Ladies and gentlemen, the holidays are coming. And if you sell stuff online, you better get ready with ShipStation. More people buying online than ever before. You have to be able to ship orders out quickly, efficiently, and affordably. But how do you keep track of all the orders? Or how do you decide which shipping carrier to use? How do you know you're getting the best rates? ShipStation can help. With just a few clicks, you'll be managing orders and printing labels and getting those products out the door and delivered in time for the holidays. No matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all your orders to one simple interface, makes it really easy to manage from any device, can even be your cell phone. Take the hassle out of the holiday shipping this year. Let ShipStation help you handle it with ease. Just use our offer code BLUE to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free, no hassle, stress-free holiday shipping. Just visit ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page. Type in BLUE, ShipStation.com. Offer code BLUE, ShipStation. Make ship happen. Uh, What else was ugly? Diggs fumbles again. Is that an issue? Yeah, that's an issue. I totally, it's an issue. I think it's. Yeah. Did you see the second time we got the ball? Oh, I loved it, it like, so much. It was like carrying a, like a newborn baby. In his <laughs> it arm. was so great. <laughs> it was so awesome because he was holding it the way I wanted him to hold it in my head. Where I was like, yeah. you better cover that thing up, dude. And then like, he started. Like Tiki Barber back <laughs> like then. Yes, dude. It was so great. Um, that to me was really encouraging, though, honestly, because a lot of professional athletes are like, this is how I do it. I'm good. Yeah, and Stefan Diggs is like, no, no, I he's aware I of it. Need to not fumble. I understand. Yeah, I'm sure he's getting an earful from from Zimmer, especially the past couple of weeks when he's like, oh, you you want the ball more? Well, you should hang on to it. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, still it's... had a great. He still he still had a great game, but I feel like the Vikings. That was the first drive of the game where he fumbled. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they were the way they were playing. They probably could have scored a touchdown and just put that game away real fast. Real but, early. You know, yeah. 
they didn't score, and then the game was a little too close for for most of the first half, and the Vikings eventually pulled away. But they could have put that away a lot earlier if Diggs probably didn't fumble. I would agree with that. Um, what did you think of Case Keenum before he was uh, concussed and unable to continue? He looked good. He did. He looked good. You know, they couldn't get stuff going on in the, in the, once they got to the red zone, but he didn't seem to be having that much trouble. You know, he had, what, the strip sack that Daniel Hunter had where he, Daniel Hunter, like, flicked it with his pinky and Case Keenum Keenan dropped the ball. Fell, yeah. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no, he he looked good. He was getting stuff done out there. Uh, Haskins, on the other hand, not looking that great. Um, I know he's a rookie, so he could look much different in the future. But and he was just thrown into the game like he probably wasn't 100 percent ready to go. Um, but and this is a guy they have like said publicly they don't want to play because they don't <laughs> want it to go poorly because yeah. they want him to you know yeah survive well, now they have, this I don't season. Think, I don't think they have a choice now. I think Keenum's out. Um. And Haskins is in at least for the next game. So that's one of those teams, and I don't feel bad for their franchise because it's like totally self uh, inflicted, uh, Mm -hmm. almost exclusively by the owner. Um, But it really is a bummer to watch a team like when Case Keenum left that game, you could see the wind leave the sails. (laughs) What little wind was left in the Washington sails uh, was like. Pretty sad when you're like, oh, Case Keenum left. Now we don't have a chance. Right, exactly. Now we're definitely done. Yeah, it was ugly. Um, I feel bad for teams. I When I was in high school, I played on a couple of really, really bad teams. Yeah. And there is no comparable torture to having to put all of your stuff on, go out and play, and get <laughs> your ass kicked in the cold. Like, knowing yeah. that you're just going to get annihilated. At least they were inside. It's the worst. Yeah, at least they were inside. That's a great point. <laughs> Not when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Freezing cold. Uphill both ways. No yeah. shoes on, because it was the rules back then. <laughs> that was pretty good for Dad. That's the first time I've gotten to do that Dad thing. <laughs> um, I'm glad we got to share that <laughs> with the audience. Um, other bad stuff. Vikings were one for four in the red zone. That's a bummer, but... Yeah, just... That more, would contribute that more to like just they didn't really practice yeah. a lot before. Yeah, they weren't really they weren't sharp. You know, Kirk great, Cousins was great way to put it. Chucking the ball downfield, he wasn't trying to force anything. So they just if they didn't if they didn't like what they saw, they didn't get it. And then Dan Bailey went out and hit four field goals and did his thing. That was didn't well, even, yeah we didn't did, mention that in the didn't game. even mention that Dan Bailey hit Damn. all four of his field goals, including what. A 50-yarder? It was oh, a 50-yarder, and it was very impressive. And uh, It looked good. Yeah, kudos, Dan Bailey. Well done, sir. I don't even, yeah, I don't even have anything, like, smart-ass to say behind that. Just good. Holder Keep, makes make a them. difference, apparently. <sighs> Evidently. They didn't punt, right? That's the other good thing that we should mention is that. No, uh, they didn't punt. The Which is weird was... in, like, a, was it 19-9? It's yeah. a weird, it's weird that they didn't punt. I know the Redskins punted, but, yeah, yeah. the Vikings. I feel like those no punt games are always like, God, they're so good on offense. And that was not what I was seeing from well, the our, I mean, they had, were decent on offense, but yeah, it they, wasn't like they a had no over, punt game. But evidently, they had over, yeah. It was. Well, that's that's because they couldn't get touchdowns when they were in the red zone. But they had over, I think they had over 400 total yards. So they still put up a bunch of yards. They just couldn't convert when they were down by the end zone. Uh, moving on from the bad stuff, or the, I guess those are only kind of bad, but interesting stuff. Adrian Peterson got a standing ovation after it was, I don't want to say announced, but they put on the fancy board, this is how many yards he got, these are the guys he passed in the all-time rushing list, and standing ovation from U.S. Bank Stadium for Adrian Peterson. What did you make of that? I was a little, I'm not going to lie, a little surprised. I was, uh, I was surprised. I definitely wouldn't have done that. Um, I guess people have short memory. I wouldn't have stood uh, up for sure. I no, have done that. I don't. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get too into it because I'm not the biggest fan of Adrian Peterson in the world. Like I've mm. called, I've called him a terrible person and stuff online. People are like, why is he terrible? I'm like, well, you've heard of Google, so you can yeah. figure that out Let for yourself. Let me tell you a little story about. Um, yeah, so kid. you can, and I have no problem with people cheering for him or, or not. That's, that's your decision that, that you make. And I, I just, I choose not to what he did, you know, a couple of years ago to a four year old, you know, now me having a, a son and you having kids, I could never imagine 
doing what he did to a ch- a young child like that who's innocent who can't defend themselves. If, uh, it kind of feels like that's the line, right? Like either yeah. you have that is a deal breaker for you, um, or it's not, and you want to have a conversation the, about what yeah. he did, or you don't. Yeah, and I'm kind yeah. of on that same line. And the, the, just... the way he reacted afterwards, where you know he felt like the the Vikings didn't stand behind him and stuff, and it's like, well, what <laughs> what did you expect them to do? Like, yeah. it was your fault, you know, own up to it and everything. And like literally, they were like standing behind you, and then the uh, sponsors were pulling out. Of yeah, the sponsorships and they, yeah. they had agreed to. They could have cut. They could have cut him. Yeah, hundred percent. They kept him around. So yeah, and people forget that part. I yeah, just it was a little surprising. I mean, I think maybe some of those people were in the moment where you're like, oh yeah, Adrian Peterson, he was he was great with the Vikings and everything, and then a couple people stand up, and then more and more and more. Yeah. So and then you got a standing ovation, and he did play very very well for this football team for a pretty darn long time. But when I'm looking at it big picture, I'm like he didn't really win yeah. anything unless Brett Favre was involved, and he was no, a pain in the ass for a number of years. He was the reason our offense was antiquated for a number of yeah. seasons. Yeah, everyone's like he was the only reason the Vikings won anything when he was around. I'm like he's the only reason they couldn't yeah, win but anything. He wasn't he was really the reason that they did win anything. He was. <laughs> he was never. He was. There was. He was hardly ever. Like the sole reason why they, why they won the game, maybe tw- maybe twenty twelve, when he just was you know that league MVP and he just put the team on his back was really the the only season where he was the main reason why they did anything. Yeah, otherwise he year. was a really good player, but was and was, was the best player on offense a lot of times, but was. But know. he needed three hundred and fifty carries to to do that, where you know someone like Dalvin Cook makes the team better, like. He doesn't really hurt them in a lot of ways, but yeah, I just, I don't. Adrian Peterson isn't someone I like to to talk about, and, and people are like, "Oh, forget it, just get over it." And I'm like, "No, can't do it. Sorry, no. I just won't." I was on the fence he, with him as a dude before because he seemed like the like stereotypical like kind of like, and he still head, does like, it. He still does it. By the way, he still punishes his kids with belts. So, but you know, yep. But, but make your own his, decision his, if you want to do decision. that. That's up to you. If you want to stand yeah. and clap for him, that's cool too. Uh, I probably would not have stood uh, and clapped for him. I probably I would have not, sat and clapped for his football. It's not off the. But. It's not off the field related. You know, you should only pay attention to football. It's like, mm, no, I don't. I don't think so. These yeah, these guys are people too. They play football for ten years of their life, maybe. Um, so the I, way you know we have, we that, have access that to stuff that. bugs me so bad. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. don't oh, other life doesn't matter uh, it does in literally every <laughs> single scenario you can think of it always matters or else j ron curse wouldn't be an issue because it was off the field or the you know, patriots anyway. tight end would still be playing for oh uh, what did he do i forgot there's, that. that's a big story there was a thing there was actually a couple of different things that happened uh with that guy we'll talk about it off air <laughs> i'll give you the story uh, other interesting stuff. The Packers barely beat the Chiefs, who, do, of course, don't have their special player. And that's so Packers as for them to mm-hmm. get the Chiefs without Mahomes. And that, oh, and, and they're, being, they're being praised. Like, it was such a great win. Aaron Rodgers, he's the greatest quarterback. They're, just, oh, they're the team to beat in the NFC this year because they went on the road, makes me beat insane. the Chiefs without Aaron Patrick Rodgers Mahomes. tried to throw a ball away and his receiver caught it, and he's the greatest yeah. thing that's ever happened. To get out of uh, here with that. He did not mean to throw that football to a player. He was trying to get rid of it. Oh, yes, sure. it was amazing, but that's not what he meant to do. I promise you that. <laughs> He won't. He won't admit to that. God no, and nor nor should he. And I would never admit to it either. If it but was yeah, I just, it. it's just it's very interesting the way that their wins against very similar opponents or situ- similar situations are viewed compared to you know what the Vikings have done this season or what they might do. Like if Kirk Cousins leads the Vikings to a win mm-hmm. on Sunday against the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes isn't playing, it's like. Well, they beat the Chiefs, but Patrick Mahomes wasn't playing. So, you know, show me something else. It's like, what do you want him to do? Yeah, I that honestly, from the Kirk Cousins perspective, is he can't win because if he wins no. these games, it's well, then there's it's because this happened, and if and he they, loses, yeah. it's because well, of course he did. It's Kirk Cousins. He's garbage. Like, when, they, it, when they play the when they play the Bears, would be like, well, Mitchell Trubisky was playing, so that's why you know yeah. the Bears lost. And when they lose to the Patriots or whoever, they'll be like, wow, yeah, Kirk Cousins can't win the big game. It's like, well, no, they're a really good football team, and he played really well. Yeah. It's like, ah, he can't win the big game. It's like, all right. Okay, <laughs> cool. 
Uh, so yeah, the Packers. <clears throat> I actually am starting to become frustrated with the Packers' progression this season, uh, as it's like playing golf, right? Where you have hit a yeah, bunch of not good. no, you've hit a bunch of really good shots, and then the guy next to you has hit the same amount of shots, but they've been horrible. But you're <laughs> both writing the same number on your scorecard, and you're feeling, I'm feeling like we're in pretty good shape here, but we're not getting any credit, and they aren't playing that great and still are writing better numbers on their cards than us. And that's frustrating me because I think the Packers are kind of, uh, I don't like throwing out the word fraud, but I think they're a little fraudulent. I don't think they're as good as people think they are. Would you agree with that? I do too. I, yeah, I think they've gotten a lot of lucky breaks um, this year, especially official related. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's that's what happens sometimes that's that's how things go for for teams that are good they get the breaks especially yep. if they play at home and their home stadium is lambeau field and when their quarterback's uh, been in the league for 15 years and been one of the most popular players that whole time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So, uh things like get that happen here too uh which was it was interesting um that they actually got called for holding last night because i was like oh yeah they're not at lambeau so they're gonna not get <laughs> so those, those calls. calls happen now <laughs> yeah but the rest of their schedule They've got like the rest of the Packers schedule. Their toughest game when they play the the Panthers, I guess they play them at home. They're probably gonna win that. They play at the 49ers. That'll be probably, a good game. And they play at the Vikings. I forgot that they play the Vikings on Monday night. Or week 16. I forgot that game was on Monday night. That'll be fun. Um, as did I forget. That. Yeah, they they play the Chargers, Panthers, 49ers, Giants, Redskins, Bears, Vikings, and Lions. So. Also, can we talk pretty, a little, yeah, that's not very pretty, pretty easy the rest of the way. Can we talk a little bit about how bad the NFC East is? Yeah, it's pretty Holy bad. The NFC smokes. is good this year, but the NFC East is like And I think the Eagles could still win that division. Yeah, and they're garbage. Or well, don't look very good. Vikings, I shouldn't say were. yeah, and or yeah. Looked okay I mean, against yeah, no, the Bills, though. They beat they the, Bill. the Bills. The Bills were fake good, too. We talked about that last <laughs> week. The Bills were fake good. Uh, moving on to Matt Nagy doing crazy, stupid things with his play calling. Well, maybe stupid isn't the right word. Unconventional. We'll say unconventional. He's down in the ball instead of running it uh, to set up a field goal for his kicker and then the... And then is like defending this move in the post game press conference because he's afraid his guys are going to fumble it and is kind of being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, like he, it's he, he lost. Yeah, he lost yards because he didn't want to lose yards yeah. from a run. Yeah. Um. And then I think he he's been calling more pass plays than run plays recently since Mitchell Trubisky came back, which yes. is weird because Mitchell Trubisky not that great of a passer. No, nope. so, he's not. Um. And then. Yeah, he was trying to explain himself yesterday why he made the decisions, the awful decisions that he did, and he was getting kind of testy with like the media and even throughout the uh, "you understand me" that kind of thing. Like, yeah, he did. Like, yeah, like Everybody he was, get that. The media was like clear here? A, a seven-year-old kid, and he's yeah. a gym teacher. Like, well, because no, that that's okay, a, dude. Dude, that's a great way to look at it because he was telling those reporters because I said so. Yeah. Why did you run it? Because that's what I wanted to do. Well, can you explain yeah. what your reasoning was behind it? It's like, I don't have to. I just do that. And it's I like, just did. Yeah. Okay. Didn't you, didn't you hear yeah, me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, because I didn't want to fumble. It's like, I wish there would have been a reporter there who would have been sharp enough and on. Not that I'm saying I could have, but that would have been with it enough to say, we're asking because that's a bad reason. Like yeah. that to say that we we didn't want to move the ball ahead because we were afraid of fumbling, but we wanted to lose yards with the kneel. Like that's a bad move. Like I wish somebody yeah. would have just called him on it, but <laughs> difficult to do when you got to go back to work. You know, the next I feel day. Like, or I whatever. feel like even Mike's even when Mike Zimmer's mad, he still will explain why they why they did certain mm-hmm. things. Like he even came out, I think after Thursday Thursday's win and talked about that that fourth down call that he made when they were on their their thirty. Woo! Could you in believe that? In the fourth quarter, <laughs> um, I was didn't shocked. Get it? Um, he said that's probably the worst decision he's ever made in his coaching career, and I was like, "Well, you're lucky that you won." Immediately was fixed by an interception, but that yeah, was one was... of the most like head scratching. I could not believe that. Everyone's like, "Oh, you should, you should go." The, the Haskins isn't going to score on on the Vikings defense. Like, well, what if he does? 
I hope that the don't give them any hope. Yeah, I hope that the quarterback, <laughs> like that, I hope he had enough confidence in the way his defense was playing to let that be part of the thought process. Because if that wasn't part of it, I yeah. can't think of another reason to do that. <laughs> that was not very smart. I don't yeah. think he does that if Keenum's still in the game. No, I bet not. And that's to me, that's the only reason you can do it is because like we're we got these guys. And then that would also then with the Xavier Road stuff explain a little bit of why they were so soft but okay with it because you were not afraid of you guys at all. Even when you mm-hmm. get down there, you're not gonna be able to do anything. And that to me makes yeah, sense. It's justifiable, I guess. Talk about that. That was a terrible decision. Yeah, that was really bad. That goes in the bad file for sure. <laughs> we should yeah, we should have spent a lot of time talking about how bad that was and how how bad it could have been cuz it still was yeah. like they only won by 10 points. Like that really yeah. could have destroyed the it could have ruined the season, Adam. I'm not trying to be crazy about no, it, it, but it could have ruined the season. Um what else do you want to discuss? Should, he should be buying Anthony Harris, whatever he wants this week for bailing him out. For real. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I was, yeah, just shocked. So thankful the interception happened. But what else do we want to discuss? I got basically nothing else. Vikings have the fifth best Super Bowl odds. Um, yeah. Oh, and then home field advantage for the Super Bowl. So fifth best, which I guess is accurate to me in the power ranking scheme of things. Um, yeah, I think it goes Patriots, Saints, uh, 49ers, and then I'm missing Patriots, Saints, 49ers. Oh, Packers, Packers, Blah. Blah. Um, and then and then the Vikings are tied with I think the interestingly enough, the Vikings are tied with the Cowboys and I believe the Eagles Weird. for fifth place with the odds. So it's so funny, I think to maybe me just because that... they think. They think that if you win the division or whatever, your, your odds of getting the Super Bowl are probably better because you get that one home playoff game. Yeah. At least. Um, Super Bowl odds yeah. are goofy and can change. I love this question. Do you think the Vikings need to have home field advantage in order to get to the Super Bowl? Like, do you think that that's like a super important thing for them to strive for this year? I, I think they need to make sure either that or hope that the Saints or the Packers don't get home field advantage yeah because i think they're probably capable of going in the san francisco and, and getting a win it's not really like a uh, this tough place to play i feel like it hasn't ever been like that or going to dallas i think they can get a win they'll be able to show if they can in a couple of weeks mm-hmm. um but yeah if it's if if the saints get home field advantage or the packers do then it's going to be very tough to get a road win on the playoffs against either of those teams. hundred percent. I'm not afraid of any of the teams in the Ah. NFC, but I'm definitely afraid of playing those teams at home. I'm Mm -hmm. definitely afraid of the saints in new Orleans and Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of the Packers in green Bay. I think they can win that game, but any other path is. Yeah. They might get a little, little more calls in, in Lambeau field than somewhere else. Barf. (laughs) Barf. I hate it. The Vikings have beaten. The Packers in Lambo though, in, in the playoffs. That was the uh, Randy Moss Moon game. So, oh yeah, They've done it that before. was so fun that game, and it was snowing, and everything was great. And it's we a disgusting happy. act. Yeah, it's a disgusting act. But he's okay. He knows it wasn't now, so it's cool. Do you <laughs> have anything else you would like to mention, Adam? Before we go, um, I just like to thank you for not even allowing me to have the decision to think about watching tonight's Monday night football game between the Dolphins and Steelers. Mm-hmm. I'm recording it and I'm going to watch it. Uh, You're recording. Because I hate myself. No, I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> oh, you, gotta, you can use that as like punishment for your kids. I was so just thinking that. You're going to sit yeah. here and you're going to watch this. Terrible football game. You're going to listen to death metal go, and you're going to watch this horrible professional. The, wa- the volume's going to go way up. You listen mm. to Booger McFarland. Oh, oh yeah, even months. better than Death Metal. You're <laughs> totally right. Worse, or better or worse, depending on who you're asking. But yeah, no, that's that's what we'll do. Definitely. I'm going to go not watch that game right now. <sighs> ESPN. I feel, I feel, I feel, I'm starting to feel bad for them. They're they getting some pretty terrible games. They got to f- figure something out. The, when can Maybe they flex? Maybe before the can season, they flex? this might have looked, this, this season might have looked, this game might have looked 
maybe yeah. kind of good. Not so good anymore. Mm, no, not so good. Pretty bad. Um, but the Vikings play the Seahawks on Monday night, a couple weeks, so that'll be good. And then they play the Packers on Monday night, so they got lucky probably with those games. But yeah, but we week... didn't. But we didn't get lucky because <clears throat> of Booger. Mm. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna watch any. Nope, not gonna watch a second. Not even a little. Bit. No, like that's <gasps> no. Oh god. Yeah, that's worse either. than the Jets and Patriots. Yeah, Patriots are... I don't know if I want to go that far. It's pretty bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> well, Ryan's, well, Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be seeing ghosts after tonight. Everybody's seeing ghosts these days. Oh, what are you? What are your kids being for Halloween? Uh, Power Ranger and Batman. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was really proud. Not going to have any burglars. Nope, no problem. Bad guys, <laughs> not a problem in my house. We got to take care guy. of. Is Woody. Oh, great. That's a great idea. <laughs> and my wife and I were Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Oh, okay, so. Potato Head. I was going to say, are you Buzz Lightyear? Are you, what's the... No. But yeah, Potato Head. No, that's Head. Kirk Cousins. Better way to do it. The well played. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll see you on Wednesday. Skull Bikes. All right. Skull. Skull.